All right, so a lot of work's been done on how to reduce injuries in sports, um, but there's, they're always going to happen. We can't totally prevent injuries for working hard and pushing our limits. There's a fine line between fitness gains and injury. So in this video, I go through a variety of options and the progressions that someone might take if they have elbow pain, tennis elbow, whether it's the inside or outside. Um, it's going to vary a little bit on some of the specifics, uh, but some of the general ideas are going to apply to, to any injury in any sport. I'm obviously focusing on squash, um, but the same principles of doing some specific work or specific load around the injured area, plus some general strengthening around it, plus a gradual progression of the sport, whether it's running or the squash stroke, okay? and then mixing in different forms of aerobic exercise or cross training to make sure that you don't lose your fitness and your strength while you're having to maybe take some time off from the sport. So things I'm going to cover are some specific elbow exercises, some general arm exercises. I'm going to look at some fitness ideas. I'm going to look at some simple racket skill drills that you can do as early progressions as you get back into training for your sport, in this case squash. So I hope you enjoy it and I hope you learn a few things. Thanks. Okay, first things first, elbow pain can take time. But let's get started on some ideas. All right, so step one is going to vary, but this is one potential place to start. So it's just a hand-to-hand -hand press, depending on where your pain site is <clears throat> or your goals. This is going to vary, but this is often the place I'll start, just isometric holds. From there, if you have the available equipment, we can get into loaded exercises with cables here. Again, I'm starting with a hold, and I progress into a targeted exercise with movement. You know, isometrics are those holds for a time where we're the place to start, but it just depends. We, we test it, we see if it works. If it doesn't, we try something different. So each case is a little bit different, and there's gonna be options for us to try. So once you feel like you've completed some of these progressions, we can make it more specific to your sport. I'm a squash player, so I'm mimicking a stroke. It's still slow. I'm trying to do this with as little to no pain as possible. You can do the forehand, the backhand. But again, we just make this specific to your sport. We're going to do all the different shots so that you feel ready to take that step onto the court. Another variation of these exercises is using a dumbbell. And again, it depends on what equipment you have available to you. And one may just be easier than the other. And, and again, we want to find a place where you're loading the tendon with success. So we put a plan in place, we see how you respond, and then we make the necessary changes. Notice I'm doing it in a variety of different directions. So again, depending on where things are sore, we, we can get creative with how we do those exercises. So from there, we may get a light med ball or a light jug of milk and just get you moving through range. And can we find a pattern where it's comfortable so that you're putting a little stress on the elbow, but not so much that it creates pain and, and makes things worse the next day? Now I move into general exercise. So, and, and this can be started on day one. Can we find exercises for your arms, elbows, wrists that are comfortable? Because the thing we want to avoid is that while you rest one area, you lose strength in another. Another benefit to doing exercise of the other side or other parts of that arm is that you will actually see increases in strength on the affected side, and that's because of the neural wiring from our body parts to our brain. And, and like the other sequences, we're always we're testing. So we're doing this, and then we see how you respond the next day. Things like push-ups are often a really nice way to 
move and load on the elbow in a pain-free way. We can go into side planks where there's less movement at the elbow. Here's a harder progression. Okay. So we're always looking to see where are you at in your journey and then how can we progress things to make it more harder so that as you get back to your sport, you're more robust and less likely to have the same injury occur again. Different pull-up variations again. So there's always options. There's always different ways to do things. No one way is perfect. And we have to realize that we're going to set a plan in place and then adjust as necessary. So from here, we're going to move into on-court or fitness drills. So as always, these are just suggestions. Everything is going to depend on how long you've had your pain, how intense your pain is. Um, but ideally, we want to get you starting on your sport as soon as we can. Right? Maybe we have to take a, a week or two. But as soon as we can, we want you doing some movements of the racket so that you don't lose those skills. An easy place to start is just some nice light hitting on your own. This way the forces are less, and because you're on your own, you can more easily influence the intensity. And again, depending on your progress to date, we may allow you to go into some pain, or we may say, no, we've got to go with no pain. So there was some simple racket drills. I also talked about keeping up our fitness. And here I'm just doing ladder drills. And we could do this with a racket. We could do ghosting. I'm just showing you an alternative. So this is obviously very light on our elbow, which is perfect, but we're staying fit. We're moving the rest of our body. So this will often help with our pain levels because exercise can be an analgesic, but it's also going to keep you from losing the hard work that you've put in to date. So there are two more examples of some things that you can do during 